Hey guys, welcome to today's Plumber Parts at Coding UK video from the studio. Like pretty much the first video I think I've ever done from this little studio. As you can see, we're right in the middle of building everything up at the moment. Got the heating going, we've got our sound stage set up and our little stage area that we can move around, make into different rooms and things like that. Super excited, can even fit the beast in here. Let's have fun, we're gonna be looking at saw pipe today because that's what I'm fitting here. Thought it'd be a great opportunity to tell you a little bit about falls and bits and bobs like that. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat and Twitter and subscribe as well. Whew. See you in the video. Hold tight! So we're here just behind us. We've got a bog, um, so we've got a four inch coming out of there. Just over there we've got a kitchen sink and also a little sort of kitchenette bit. Um, and then also a little basin as well so you can wash your hands after you've done a wee wee or a poo poo. Ah. And what that's going to do is we're going to run that all the way through down here. And just out of shot down there by about another three meters, we've got our main drop pipe going in. So what we're going to be looking at and where we're going to be working at most in this video is going to be just along here, around there, like so. Oh, it's going to be great. Thing is, right, there's a lot of chit chat about drops, bits and bobs like that. Often the drop, you won't be having to figure it out or work it out or anything because you haven't really got much of a choice. And let's talk about why now. So often the fall for a waste pipe or a soil pipe isn't really gonna be anything you can define yourself properly. If we get out this lovely bit of nine millimeter MDF, or I think it's nine mil, I don't know. Let's have a quick look at what most jobs are. So most jobs you're gonna have a house like this, okay? And you're gonna have two floors. There's gonna be a waste pipe that sticks out like that. And maybe the drop down stack is here. You've already got a T-bar in there and you are just gonna be running that down into your old branch. When you're doing new jobs, okay, a lot of the time we sort of work between two areas of drop and fall. I mean, you may have heard someone say, um, it needs a drop of one in 40, or it needs a drop in one in 110. And that's like the lowest. So one in 40 is really quite steep and one in 10 is much more shallow, and that's kind of the spectrum. If you're anywhere between there, your drop is gonna be probably just about right. But let's figure out what that actually means. One in 40, so for every 40 centimeters across your going, you want to drop by one centimeter, easy. And for every 110 centimeters you go across, you wanna drop by one centimeter. Now often what you'll be doing if you're working out falls and drops is often like soil drainage. It'll be in the ground um, and it's not something that you're gonna to have to do along the wall because that's often predefined. So what I'm trying to say is for ground workers, they are predetermining their own drops because they're digging the trench um, and sometimes they'll need like little brake tanks and things like that if they're going down a hill um, to make sure that they haven't got too much or too little drop, that's fine. But for what we're looking at, which is often grey soil pipe that you're going to be putting up outside a wall or, or something like that, you're often already predefined by the, the branch that's there already or the toilet hole that's coming out of the wall. You can't be changing the toilet height much, can you? Let's face it. I mean, there are things you can do behind a toilet, like elbow it down. So, you know, your outlet hole is a different height, that sort of thing. But most of the time, we're gonna be going straight out the back. <laughs> So the job that we're doing today, as you saw, we're gonna be coming out the back of the toilet with a standard toilet pan connector, like a McAlpine multi-quick. Um, then we're gonna be going into a uh, four inch elbow, and then we're gonna have two lengths of pipe. So that means we've got a six meter run. Now that's important because the first thing we've done there is we now know one of the dimensions that we need to figure out to know what our gradient is and, and also whether it's okay. So if we go on the rule of thumb that the shallowest possible drop that you're allowed and is permissible is um, for every 110, or to make it easier, I do for every metre, you want a minimum drop of a centimetre, okay? So we're gonna want a drop from our outlet here, and what we do for drops is we don't measure from the centre of the pipe, we actually measure from the bottom of the pipe, but that's what I usually do. Everyone's got their own way of doing it. So say we've got a little bit of bottom pipe here, we're gonna want a difference between the bottom of this pipe here and when it goes into our T branch, we're gonna want a difference of roughly six centimeters across this whole lot here. That is a rule of thumb. It's not something you have to stick by 100%. 
To be honest, I'd much prefer to be able to maybe do it so we've got one and a half centimetres for every one metre that we're going in our travel across here. Those parameters there are just there for guidance. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick our pipe in, mat the plasterers around here earlier on, so I've got to kind of be careful with the inside bit of the toilet because there's quite a lot of wet muck up there and he's going to get the goddamn up if I uh, mess up his, uh, his plaster. One thing I want to say as well, guys, please follow us on Instagram because this week has been an interesting one on Instagram. Well, we've got a master of his trade here today. Matt's here. <laughs> Look at the damage. Skimming my bog for me. The studio's coming along pretty well. Ted. Ted. What's this? What's this? This is my pencil, mate. No, no, it's not yours. It's mine. Get. Things like that, if you're interested, follow us over on Instagram. I'll leave a link that should be appearing right now for you to go and click on there. And also there's a link below as well. So anyway, let's go over and actually have a look at where we're going to be doing this and how I'm going to get this job done. Another funny thing as well about having a little doggy on site is I was bending over getting, doing some prep work for this, which is why there's a little puddle over there out of, out of shot, but we'll see that in a minute, uh, was Ted started lovingly nuzzling my bum crack, uh, which I thought was really quite funny and also strangely arousing. Why have I drilled a hole here? Let's firstly just cover that quickly. Well, it's quite simple. I know that my toilet is going to be sat on this floor here. Therefore, I knew exactly where my height of my toilet outlet was just by measuring up from where it sat on the floor to halfway up the toilet outlet. And then I knew exactly where the center was to drill my hole. How did I know how far to drill out my hole on here? Well, obviously it's very important. And I try and run on the theme that for every three meter length of pipe, you want at least two clips. And that's why our clip depth is gonna hold our pipe out so it's this far off the wall. Very easy for us to figure out. We just pop our clip on the wall here and as you can see, that's bang on right for getting that in there. Very quick tip about clips. A lot of people make this mistake. There are two types of clip. And don't get this the wrong way round, because if you do, you're going to go absolutely mental. One is for the actual pipe run, but one also will take the width of a socket, so it's bigger, all right? And th then it, th that means that the pipe's going to sort of rattle about on it. It's very rare that you really want to clip sockets. Um, you're more likely to be getting clips that's going to actually fit the pipe itself. So I'm going to have it up here like that. If I, if, if I can, I'm going to sort of pop my finger under here. So the bottom of our pipe is about 14 centimetres. And now really important for us to do is to pop over right over to here and see what we've actually got to go into. Let's have a look at that now. So we are going to be going all the way down to the darkest depth. We're going to put a T-branch in here because I'm going to be wanting to maybe put a toilet in there to film it. And I want to show you guys exactly how all the waste pipe works for that. I'm just thinking of you. Remember that, I'm, all I'm thinking of is you. So we're going to be running all the way down to here. And as you can see, we're just getting into a wet bit because I got my plasterer to pour his water down there earlier. So look, I think we can see already that if we were going to measure from the bottom of the pipe where it goes in here, this is our, this is our called no way back sort of area. We're going to measure from there down, that's going to be about 10 mil, okay? So we know that that's our depth there. So guys, are we within our parameters? We've got a hole going of 6,000 millimeters. At one end, we've got 140 millimeters. And at the bottom end, we've got 10 millimeters. So the difference between the bottom of the top end and the bottom of the bottom end is, guess what, 130 millimeters. So firstly, let's figure out the maximum amount of steepness we're allowed going along with the rule of one in 40. The best way to do this is to divide our going so that's 6,000 by 40 that leaves us with 150 equate that to either 150 millimeters or 15 centimeters and that's the maximum amount of drop we're allowed between the top and the bottom of this run and as you can see at the moment we're well within that tolerance so let's have a quick look and see the minimum amount of fall we're allowed so we get our 6,000 and divide that by 110. And that comes out of 54.54, which is 54 millimeters. So to be safe, the minimum amount of drop you want along the whole of the going of this is gonna be six centimeters, really. Now I know that I'm well within the parameters that I've set myself for this job, I'm happy to carry on and start installing the soil pipe on the wall. Just a couple of little naughty tips if you're on site as well. If you wanna do any cutting, I always go out to the chippy, see if you can get any reed pieces and you can just sit that in there. And you wouldn't believe actually how well that holds it for you to cut the pipe because this can be a bit annoying to cut and roll about quite a bit. Also, you are going to want whatever cut you do to get a rasp or get a file, or if you're really lucky, you can actually get a proper deburring machine um, to put a chamfer on this because you are pushing it into a fitting 
that is exactly the right size. And also you've got a really thick kind of rubber insert there that makes up a watertight seal. Um, along with that as well, you're gonna wanna get some sort of lubricant for this. Um, you can get silicon spray lubricant, uh, you can use ferry liquid, you can even spit on it and just rub that round there as if you're on a pawn set and, and then that'll, that'll get it going really easily. I'm going to do the old pawn set one because I don't know where any of my stuff is. I'm building this, I've got like two jobs on elsewhere, I've got work on at the house and I've got tools all over the country at the moment, it's driving me nuts. Now what I want to do now is we want to make sure that our fall is nice and straight, that these two are nice and perpendicular. Uh, we're going to put a cap in this so we don't have to worry about that later. And up that end I'm going to put like a, a metre stub on and a dergo as well. A dergo is an air admittance valve. But anyway, um, the reason we're not putting these together just yet is obviously we want to get our clips hung. Uh, we want to make sure that everything's perpendicular and straight all the way down as well. A good way that I like to do this is to think about my centre clip first and divide everything from that in half. So we know that we've got a run of six metres, so if we measure three metres down, we're roughly going to be here. We know we've got our 14 centimetres there and one centimetre there, so we've got a difference of 13 centimetres. If we divide that by two, that's 6.5. So we know then that roughly here, our clip, the bottom of the trough of our clip, wants to be 6.5 millimetres off the ground. And obviously all that comes into bearing as to whether our floor is level and our walls nice and level and things like that. So think about that. Similarly, what I'm then gonna do is I know now that the bottom of the trough clip is here, is 6.5 going up to 14. I could then measure up here, make that difference there as well. But a lot of guys aren't gonna do that because there's not much flex in this pipe. And once you've got your one clip here, you can almost just pop the clip on there, mark the holes, and then whip everything out of the way and drill your holes and get it plugged in clip like that. Got a good fixing on here now. We've got a nice washer, a good screw, and that's not going anywhere at all. Right then, guys, so we've got it all in. We've got our pipe running it down here. We've got a little T branch just coming up, ready for some work that we're going to be doing on the other side of the studio. If you just want to have a quick look at that as well, where that is, that's, that's the state of the studio at the moment. Um, but look, as you can see, we've got a really good, adequate drop on that all the way. Uh, nice little gradient on that. And then we're going round to our T branch just down here. I've got my Durgo, my little stub ready to go. We did have to go over to putting our last clip on the floor because the first fixed pipe work that had been done by the ground workers like months ago was a little bit too far out off the wall for our clips to actually reach. I could have got around that another way by like cutting small stubs of copper to sort of stick out the clip a bit more or maybe mounting it on a little bit of battened wood. There's loads of ways around it guys, work whatever is best for you. There's no hard and fast rule to any of this, that's the thing. The good thing is right, we haven't put our cap in here yet. And obviously, if we go down to here, I haven't put my cap here yet either. So what I'm gonna do, I don't know if this is gonna work very well, because I'm on my own today, I'm gonna pour some water out of the kettle down the four inch stub pipe that we've got. Let's see if we can chase it. Got to be quick. So four inch stub pipe's just here, kettle's just here. I'll be real quick here, right. There's water going in there now. Ugh. Should better go here and see water running down. There you go, water. And then we should be able to go to here. There you go, you can just see a little bit of water just there. There you go, a little bit of water. Hey, hey! So that tells me that our pipe drop is absolutely fine. We've got no problems there at all. We've got it nice and sturdily fixed. There's no problems there. And we now know that whatever we put down there, believe me, on a Friday, I've got a little, well, I'll show you quickly. Hey! hey. I've got a little, a little fridge area that I'm building up as well. This is all sort of outside of normal work hours. So yeah, I'm gonna have a few beers in there and obviously on a Friday, crack open a couple of beers. Maybe if we're gonna do a late night Friday filming, get a curry pop down here or maybe get a Chinese takeaway dropped off and then bang, that saw pipe's gonna have to deal with it. It's gonna have to deal with all of it. Yeah. So there we go guys, all done. We've got a waste pipe in, we've tested it, we've got no leaks, we know our drop's okay, we know we've perfectly fixed it across here. But we've also recognised about the fact that there's no real hard and fast rule as to how to do this. You've got quite a lot of scope for how much drop you want. And also, you know, when it comes to fixing stuff, there's so many different ways of doing it. 
Obviously make sure that whatever you're fixing with, you're using the right equipment to do it in the right way. I've probably missed something out in this video because there are so many different things to do. I will show you that we're gonna be bossing into this pipe, so I'm gonna show you how to do some bossing. I'm also gonna show you exactly how we're gonna run a cold feed across here, so we'll be clipping that up and doing that soon as well. So we've got lots to do in the couple of weeks ahead. Oh yes. I'd like to remind you, number one, follow us on Instagram. I love Instagram, it's the best. Everybody loves it. Number two, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook, and follow us on Snapchat. Snapchat's especially good around the weekend when I get quite drunk and I wake up on Sunday morning, I've got my Snapchat open, I'm like, oh my God. Um, also, follow us over on my other vlog channel, Times with James, I'll leave a link to that. And also, of course, subscribe. If you need any more help, comment in the comment section below, and I'll see you soon. Hold tight, everybody. Bye-bye. like to pay, I don't want to owe you one. You'll ring me up at shit times yeah. and ask me to do shit I've jobs. Wanted, I've wanted something like this for ages. <laughs> Evil. If you've enjoyed today's plumberparts.co.uk video, then please press the subscribe button now. And before I go, let me tell you a little joke, a funny one. Um, why are giraffes' necks so long? Well, it's because their heads are so far away from their bodies. <laughs> uh, yeah, see you in the next video.